Hey guys, welcome to my family room. As you see above me, I've got a big ugly metal beam and today I'm gonna to show you how we turn it into this. So before we head out into the garage and start cutting up some wood, a little bit of backstory on what is going on here. Now we moved into this house about a year ago. We had a flood in this room immediately because of a burst pipe and this room is thus fully renovated. Now this beam I left exposed because we thought it would be cool to cover it up with some kind of fake wood instead of just leaving it as a beam or just drywalling over it. Now knowing this ahead of time, when I did the ceiling, I installed these two by twos right here on either side and that's how we're gonna attach the beam when it's all fully made. So now let's talk about our material choice. I really wanted to use one by 12 rough sawn lumber, which you can readily get from Home Depot. Now, unfortunately our beam is 12 inches and nominal one by 12 lumber is only 11 and a quarter. Thus, I have in front of me three sheets of half inch construction grade plywood. Now it's construction grade plywood because it's gonna have that rough texture, no sanding involved. I did do some test with the dark stain we're gonna be putting on this, and we found that without sanding, it really maintains that rough texture, and that's the look we're going for. So now we're at the table saw, and we're ready to start breaking down these three sheets of plywood. The reason we have three sheets of plywood is these are eight feet long, the room is 21 feet long, so we're gonna need three equal sections of seven feet, give or take an inch or two. Now I'm gonna be breaking these down to their rough dimensions at first, maybe an inch or two oversized, as this will give us a lot more control when we go to push it through the table saw to create that long bevel along the bottom, as we are gonna be adding a 45 degree bevel along the bottom to hide the layers of plywood. So we're over here at the chop saw and I'm gonna be cutting everything to its final length. There's gonna be three equal sections of 81.5 inches. And the reason we're doing this first before cutting the bevels is any length we take off this is gonna make it more manageable when we push it through that tricky 45 on that almost seven foot length. So this will just make everything a little bit easier. So there are nine pieces cut to final length. We're over here at the table saw and I've got my blade set to 45 degrees. Now, because we're gonna hide these plywood edges, we're gonna rip a bevel along all the sides. We'll only need to add a bevel along the bottom of the two side pieces, but we're gonna to have to add a bevel onto either side of the flat bottom piece, which covers the underside of the I-beam. Okay, the moment of truth, it's time for our glue up. Now the way we're gonna do this glue up is we're gonna be using two inch painter's tape along all the seams. So I've already gone ahead and made sure that we're flush at the end, both ends, and that these joints are nice and tight. As right now we have the bevels facing down, we're gonna to have to apply the tape, make sure it's really on there, then flip this whole assembly over before applying the glue to that mitered edge. Then we'll fold it up, put some clamps and spacers to make sure it doesn't fold too much, then we'll just leave it there to dry. So the glue up of the miters is complete. I've taken the tape off, inspected all the edges. Now it looks really good, but there are some places here and there where the miters weren't exactly 100% perfect. Now in order to deal with this and also break these sharp edges, we're gonna be using this, a big round screwdriver, pushing into that miter and kind of folding the edges over on themselves. This really blends in the two pieces of wood to make them look like one continuous piece, as well as softening that corner and hiding any flaws. So I'll just show you what I'm gonna do here and then I'll bring in for a closer look at the awesome results we get from doing this. So the next thing we're gonna do is add these offcut pieces of plywood as gussets in the corner to really strengthen those miter joints on either side. We're just gonna slather them both in glue and then keep them in place with some one inch me nails. And we'll move on. So 
So the box sections are all glued up and before we can call them complete and move on to staining, we next need to scribe them to the ceiling as the ceiling isn't quite perfect and we really want that zero gap look. So I'm just gonna place them up here, prop a two by four underneath so it doesn't fall on my head. And using the thickness of a pencil, I'll just trace along the edge and we'll go out to the garage and make our final cuts. All right, we're finally at that point where it's time for stain and what we're gonna use is chocolate color by Verathane. I'm gonna brush it on super thick, then come back with a towel and wipe off the excess and we'll let it dry for a few days before moving on to the polyurethane stage. And now we can go ahead with our final step for the beams and that's to put polyurethane protection on them. I'm going with a satin finish as this is going to be rustic. We don't want this looking too plasticky and shiny. Now I'm gonna be trying to apply this with a roller. I've never done this before. I usually spray or brush. So I guess we'll see uh, what kind of results this yields. Hopefully very well, as I think this is gonna go pretty quick this way. All right, our three beam sections are fully done. Polyurethane, everything. Now it's on to hiding the two seams in the middle as there is the three sections. We're not gonna do anything with the ends, they're just gonna butt up against the wall. And the way I'm gonna hide those seams is with these four inch wide flat bar hot rolled mild steel bars that I had bent up and cut to size at my local metal shop. This only cost me $40, so it's really not too bad. Now the thing about this hot rolled mild steel is it comes with this kind of dark gray finish on it. This is the mill scale from the factory where they make it. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using this cold blue or gun bluing to turn these black, give it that antique look. Now, before we can do this, we're gonna to need to clean up the surfaces, get down to bare metal. And to do that, we have a super awesome tool. And there we have it, the Viver four inch burnishing tool. This is basically an angle grinder on steroids. It has this enormous flap on the front, which is gonna easily take off this mill scale, get us down to bare metal so we can do our cold bluing. Now this thing is sent to me by Viver. We're gonna see just how it works. If it works awesome, you can get yours link in the description down below. If it doesn't work awesome, there's still gonna be a link in the description down below. Now let's get to it. And there we have it. The Viver 4-inch burnishing tool did awesome. Took all of our mill scale away really fast. Again, if you want one, there is a link in the description. Now, before we can add the bluing to these pieces of metal, I'm going to go ahead and mark out the location for all the half-inch holes as we are using half-inch lag bolts to simulate a bolt going through the beams. So I'm going to use my combination square and a Sharpie, and I'm just going to set it along the side. This is my halfway point, about six and a quarter inches. And then the thickness of the ruler is one inch, so that's going to be our spacing. Just mark a dot. And then we're gonna set the combination square to two inches and that's gonna be the spacing for the other four bolts on each. Okay, we'll mark the other side, then we'll center punch these and drill out our half inch holes. So our brackets are fully prepped, ready for bluing. Now it's onto the lag bolts, which are gonna hold the brackets onto the beams. And these are just short little half inch lag bolts. And what I've done is I've taken them to the belt grinder, taken off these letters and numbers and dipped it in the bluing. And this is the result we get. So now we're just gonna take all these other bolts and grind off the letters. It's time for bluing. Okay, so this stuff is called Perma Blue. It's corrosive and poisonous, so we wear gloves. And I've just put it in the sour cream bowl so we're not getting the whole bolt black or blue. There's really no point. So I'm just gonna leave these in for five seconds, take them out, do all the bolts, and then I'm gonna use my brush and brush it on over here. Wipe off the extra after a few seconds. Hopefully this goes well. So 
So overall, I think the bluing came out not too bad in the end. The next thing we're gonna do is coat everything in mineral oil for 24 hours. For these, I'm just gonna dip in this cup, set aside on this paper towel. And then for these ones, I'm gonna wipe them down, super saturate them with the mineral oil, and then just leave them to dry. So it's the next day, I'm gonna wipe these down, and then we're gonna start installing all of this. So we're back inside the house. Everything is now ready to go. We're just gonna lift up the beams, me and my wife here, and then I'm gonna attach everything with inch and a half brad nails. You'll never see these. And then we'll come back and add the brackets, and that'll be that. So one thing I'm gonna do real quick is put this sticky note on the ceiling so I know not to shoot a brad nail through this conduit, which is my internet. Ta-da! The last thing we need to do for this project to be fully done is install our brackets. I'm just going to slide them over top here, pre-drill some holes, drive in our lag bolts, and it's done. Ooh, tight fit.